Uh, okay, so how's everybody doing? Um, this is uh, kind of unplanned, kind of like I was thinking about doing it, but um, decided let's kind of go ahead with it because this is a pretty good example of, or not a good example, but like a good time to be um, re reviewing kind of my uh, AR defense. Now we can see here four hours left, so today's the last day. I already got all my attacks in. Um, let's go kind of see where we are. So we're in 36. Obviously, we're not going to make it back. We're not going to make it to stay in here next um, next week. Uh, for or I guess for this week, yeah, because it starts tomorrow. Um, but regardless, um, let's kind of take a look here. So my defense lost me about 200 points. So let's pretend we had these 200 points and we didn't lose them. Now, getting perfect defenses every time is not like it's not necessarily possible. But let's kind of like imagine the um, if I had a better defense at least, right? It's kind of the bottom line. Um, so if I had a better defense, we you know let's pretend like this is 200 and then we put it all into here. So I'd have 20,500 about. That puts us in the middle of tier 37. Now, that still wouldn't be enough. I'd be, what, 300 points short? Yeah, I'd have 25, I need 28. I'd be 300 points short of, short of 38. Um, but the thing is, uh, and kind of like I, like I said earlier before, uh, one of the main reasons I don't do a lot of AR content is because I'm not as like responsible with it as I, as I should be, um, which means uh, I missed an attack. Uh... Yeah, I missed an attack this week, uh, this season, just because, again, it's kind of like, I don't know, I feel less pressured to be playing or getting um, my attacks in and all that stuff 100% of the time because I'm probably not going to make it to tier 38 anyway. But if we were to look at this and kind of analyze this, like I said, if I had not lost those points, I'd have about 200 extra, so about 2,500, uh, 20, I'd be like right uh, somewhere in the middle of... Uh, tier 37 and then if i had won that that offense that i just like completely you know threw away because i wasn't there that gives me about 388 points which would have been plenty to get back into uh tier 38 right um so you can kind of see that we're like in spinning distance of being able to just like consistently place well but um yeah and i've also lost kind of track of the alternation because again the, the other thing to consider is staying in ar uh, tier 30, uh, staying in the tier 30 and above consistently from week to week is actually a lot harder than just swapping in and out or, or being able to hit it every so often. Um, because the way, cause and I, you know, like I said, I lost count, so I'm not sure when the hard season is supposed to be because theoretically when they first started, um, basically, you know, everybody got in there because everybody can make tier 27, right? Uh, and the people who couldn't make it to tier 38 to go into next week to stay there, uh, that next seat, that next season after that very first season, was the real hard one because then everybody you're fighting against everybody who actually deserves to be in there rather than a lot of us who just kind of slipped in there um sort of you know by not by chance but like you know it was easier for us to get in there the first time um because the requirement to stay back to back is a lot harder than it is to just get in there um so the point being that even if i had made it in there this isn't entirely like a good explanation a good um example of like oh you know i'm good enough to be in tier 38 or whatever uh, but it's just something to consider, right? It's uh, something to consider. Anyway, uh, that was that's the main point of showing this. Uh, maybe we could have made it if I had a better defense, if I hadn't lost that uh, offense, and, and and so on and so forth. Uh, and I can't actually see. I was gonna, I was going to see if I could see um, how many points I get. Uh, but the the main thing we're here to do is to see uh, the defense results. Uh, and I got a few, quite a few wins actually. If we can look down here, there was quite a few successes here. Which is kind of interesting um, because, like I said, I had missed a day like early on somewhere, um, and that means I was thrown into a lower bracket. So right now I should have been fighting against other people who are pushing for tier thirty eight and whatnot. Um, but uh, you know I was fighting other people who are very low in terms of their rank, which is why it's easier to uh, easier to beat them, right? So like I let's say I had got success here, I probably wouldn't have gotten success here, but since I missed one day my bracket was lower and I fought someone who else was lower and you know I was able to beat them but you know it is what it is so let's just kind of go in here the reason I wanted to point out is because there have been a few changes to the to the map now I like this one because it's a good spectrum of like where it was before and how it's changed um going kind of going forward a little bit um so we can see here uh let's see how we won here oops I should probably take off animations make sure that's off Okay. So I'm actually surprised we won here. Um, Vector usually gives us trouble. Let's take a look at what this Vector build is. 
Uh, okay, this is this is why. Uh, this is this is a AR defense built vector. Yeah, I need the skill. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like an AR defense built vector. And not really optimal, um, especially you know plus one and all that. So you know, let's, let's kind of see where this this takes us. Okay, so this is probably a mistake. I'm not sure why they did this. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Oh, that's yeah. I guess that's why. Okay. So she's got okay. So I can see what what the the idea was here. Uh, did I support? Oh, okay, there we go. I was like, what's going on there? Um, so basically, what kind of saved us there was just the fact that, um, for one, right, the fact that I have fire sweep on her and she's hitting res, which is just the best place to be hitting, uh, especially on vector, and uh, you know, or not fire sweep, uh, wind sweep. Then that kind of saved us, but we lost the dance because we had to kill him twice, basically. Um, she has this, which is basically what uh, made her win against her, which is, you know, kind of sad. But, uh, yeah, she has double effectiveness and she still lost, so <laughs> that's kind of sad. Uh, so there's that. So let's kind of see what, what goes forward. I mean, okay, so she killed her. I think the problem is that now they can't kill, yeah, back. Um, they can't really kill her because she can vantage every one of these and they'll all die. Uh, she's blue uh of course she can't hit anybody because she's going to be hitting into edelgard uh but her she, her special is charged so basically means that she can just hit her and she'll die uh and then again like i said there's really no they can't do anything to, to stop her she's going to advantage every single one of these units and then you know we've got a dance here um, so you can kind of see what happened here i mean this is kind of the way the team is supposed to work is like you know <laughs> i i mean uh, you know when it when it works it works right um Let's take a look at this here. Uh, what happened here? Okay, so we're looking at a Brunya. That's kind of interesting. What is she? Okay, not not fully invested. Max speed Brunya. That's kind of weird. Let's see what she uh, plans to do with her. Or see what this person, not he or she. But yeah, I mean, you can see like... For those of you who've been here long enough, I mean, you, you can see that, like, in theory, this kind of works a lot, but, you know, you're, you're fighting against so many people, and, and the flyer balls are sort of old old by now, and it's kind of, like, not that hard to counter much more. Just every so often, you find people who are kind of, like, unprepared, I guess I would say. So I'm not sure. I mean, I guess this was a mistake, but maybe not if, yeah, she's going to die. Um, yeah, that Caden shouldn't have been there. But uh, this is kind of the other thing, which I, I really enjoy about uh, one of the changes they made. They gave us uh, air orders in the C slot, which sometimes you look at it and you just kind of look at the skills and like, okay, whatever, they don't have anything. And you, you, you're like, okay, you don't see, you don't see a uh, flyer formation on Byleth. And you're like, oh, okay, her range is kind of limited. I don't know, but maybe maybe I'm just stupid, right? Maybe that happens to me <laughs> a lot. But a lot of the time, I'll just like forget that flyer air orders is there. Sometimes like there's ground orders. Sometimes you know there's a bunch of other like movement types. They get inherited in this way, right? So she gets flyer formation from her. But if you kind of just looked at the team and were like, okay, whatever, you know, you would have thought this Caden here was safe because she wouldn't be able to reach. But you know, thanks to flyer formation, she she jumped ahead two spaces here and then just was able to snipe him. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I, I really like this. Unfortunately, it's kind of annoying because it basically means that like one of the more successful ways is just kind of tricking people like with restore traps, rally traps, all that kind of traps. Um, those are always really irritating. But yeah, so we basically kind of beat that guy by catching him off guard because uh, she was able to fly here, snipe Caden, and then dance and then snipe uh, the other person here. So kind of, you know. That's kind of the idea with Byleth, is she's supposed to be there just like it's a very hard nuking carry. Um, of course, plus 10 as always. Uh, let's go back. Okay, so let's take a look here. So we're just looking through some successes real quick, but we'll go through, see some failures, and we'll see kind of like 
some stuff I've kind of concocted to like really think about dealing with that. Uh, as you can see here, there's a Linja here, which I'm not sure how we lost or how we won, considering Linja is also Linja is also um, one of the like hardest things for this for this team to deal with. She just hits too hard, and she's uh, she's just way too nimble. She has too many turns. Very interesting to see the Saros on offense. I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe they just, I don't know. And this is also a, a good sign. See down here, this is a good sign of like someone who's not as experienced, right? So if we win this, it's probably just like something dumb happened. But like, you don't really want to fill this bottom line back here because if you run into a cav line, you basically auto lose. So that's something to consider. Hmm, let's see. Okay, so she thought she was safe there, but basically Byleth can hit her. Yeah, Byleth hits her. Again, that was another case of like, okay, I don't think she's going to hit me. So basically the only person who can hit me is is her and we'll get her out of position. But, you know, like I said, the, the, the air orders gave her flyer formation. Then she was able to just snipe her like it was nobody's business. And then she gets danced. And she gets a second snipe. Uh, this time a more important unit. And then she gets repositioned out of danger, theoretically. I mean, she's still like... Kind of vulnerable there, uh, as you're about to see. Oh, actually, he went for the Nishida. I guess Nishida is probably better because Nishida can destroy her probably one shot. Or, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Uh, but definitely can kill her and definitely is a threat to her, so. But, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, they just kind of left because you can't leave her there because basically she's going to uh, take her out next turn. Um, one of these two is going to kill her, probably. And then... It's two against like four now, and they're still kind of like lagging behind. So that's that. Uh, what are we looking at? One, two, three. So one failure here. So let's take a look at here and see what happened and see, you know, uh, every time I make these videos, the, the, the faults are kind of the same, and we kind of see them. As we can see here, Vector um, is here, and he's plus 10. So we'll, we'll have a good, you know, this will be a good time to see, you know, what happened. Uh, why Bector's so strong, basically, though, you know, I'm sure we already know uh, to a large degree, but let's see. So he gets moved up there. Okay. So as you can see here, my Pala didn't do any damage to him whatsoever because he's got 52 defense, which is pretty insane, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot to be said there. It's just that there's there's nothing we can really do to, to stop a plus 10 vector, especially on this defense tile. Now, like I said uh, last time, will a Pala with Dive Bomb and Heavy Blade 4 um, do much to him? Mm, that's still kind of to be debatable. Uh, but, you know, certainly it's a better chance than we have now. And the, the chances of running into a, a plus 10 vector every single time isn't really um, practical or, like, realistic. So it's not something... Dedicating a lot of resources to something you only see, like, once every so often um, to counter something once you'll see once every so often isn't really worthwhile because you really need to play the percentage game, right? You need to play... You need to cover, you know, most um, options rather than all options because it costs way too much to, co to cover. Like, for, right... What? I don't know. It's kind of, well, I, you know, it's kind of hard to put to numbers, but like with, you know, whatever, especially like my investment, right? You know, with like 20% investment into this game, into resources and all that stuff, I can basically cover, you know, more or less 90% of the options, right? To get, to cover that last 10% of those options, I have to invest the other 80% of my effort, time, and money, right? And that's not really something, you know, It's that's really worth it, right? So that's, that's kind of something to consider is you get diminishing returns on a lot of things, right? So not only just in this game, but in, in general, in a lot of games and a lot of stuff, it's always important to consider, like, cost to um, cost-benefit analysis, basically, right? So not that, it's, not that this is too scientific. It's just one of those things where it's like, like I said, you can, I'm investing, whatever I'm investing in this game, I'm already covering 90% of the options. I'd have to, like, double my investment of, of what I'm doing. 
uh, to get only a 10% return, right? And so, you know, that's not, you know, that's something that, that bothers me too much. Um, and still, as you can see here, you know, we sniped one unit, which basically means we'll have a better score at the end of this. Um, we're not losing so much score. So that's pretty good. I mean, you know. And we can see we lost here. So there we go. And replay. Uh, so that was a failure. Let's take a look at this person. See how they did. So on here. So it's it's really funny because like basically everybody uh, got a linja and immediately just started like, oh, let's put her on our offense and we'll use her everywhere. And and um, a lot of people don't really know how to use linja very well. So, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Sometimes you end up losing. So let's see what happens here. Okay, this is a very interesting uh, move. So she went there first. Okay. Okay, let's see how my team responds. I haven't actually seen this one. I saw the other ones, but not this one. So of course, I kind of assume Byleth is going to do that, and I'm not sure why he didn't assume Byleth was going to do that. And there we go. There's that. Um, that's the other thing to con to the to consider. Um, this really shuts down Byleth. So for those of you who don't have this tower or like losing to Byleth all the time, uh, just kind of make sure you have your tower upgraded. Right here, it's only level six, uh, level four, but I upgraded to level five after this or, or at some point because uh, you'll see later it's level you know fully maxed. Um, but yeah, so you know, make sure you have your duelist hindrance and you have um, you know at least one. But I, I like having two just because I mean these two are very good units anyway. Uh, but at least if they snipe one, it's not that big a deal. Um, yeah. Uh, but then there we go. I mean, this basically saved us, right? Uh, the fact that they that you couldn't move the the ninja lin out of the way with her own dance, and then she kind of they, they, this person realized that a little bit too late. Um, so yeah. That happens to me a lot with um, not with the duo tower, but the um. The tactics room, this thing right here, like, I'll, for, I'll like forget that it, it, you know, it's probably one of the most crippling things ever, and all I use are ranged units, so like, I'll just get in the range of it, and suddenly I'm like, oh, I can't move a space for some reason, and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot the tactics room was there. <laughs> I think we lost this one basically because of Altina. Like, this Christmas Altina is just, like, very strong, like, I forgot, does she have vantage in the weapon, I think? No, she doesn't. What gives her vantage? Is it this? Oh, there we go. That gives her vantage. That's, that's what was like weird. Oh, but yeah, she's very strong. Um, especially with this, giving her more attack. Uh, she can't be... Um, basically, I can't buy a sweeper. Uh, theoretically, Pala should be able to do something. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, what else? Yeah, I mean, yeah. She's kind of hard to deal with. All there is to it. Okay, so she gave herself vantage here. And now it's my turn. Okay. So she does probably just gonna die, right? Yeah, she can't take a hit. And because see, this is kinda annoying, right? Because because she don't went in there, she charged her, her special. Now, she was still gonna double her and probably kill her with the uh, twin blades anyway, so you know, no big deal. Uh, but still it's pretty annoying, right, that for some reason she don't went in first, even though I think Pala might have had a better chance, even though I don't think any of them. I think they all just would have died anyway. Uh, and there you go. Um, this is one of the uh, one of those options out there that I really need to cover. Um, basically, I just have to run uh, Hardy Bearing on on Pala, and I think it should be done right. So the theoretical like end game Pala should probably be like plus ten because that you need those stats to fight against Specter. Um, but obviously I don't have a plus 10, it's only plus 2 currently. Um, but having her with Heavy Blade 4, Dive Bomb... Oh, actually, no, that doesn't work, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, Hardy Bearing will negate my Dive Bomb thing. Yeah, so that, that kind of defeats that purpose, never mind. I don't know, you just, you have to have a Hardy Bearing unit, because having this Vantage effect is just gonna, it just destroys my team currently. Only problem being, uh, there's no one I have that is really, like, optimal to be using Hardy Bearing, because... Like, you can put... I mean, there's no one to put it on. Like, Camilla's not here to kill anybody. Um, what's her name? 
Um, and, and we see we already lost here, kind of right, so that's fine. Uh, Camilla is not really there to kill anybody. Um, let's see, where are we? Is it this one? Do we see this one? No, not this one. Um, young Minerva is not really there to kill anybody. She's just kind of a good tank that might kill somebody at some point. I can't run it on young Sheeta because she needs the vantage, so that defeats that purpose. Um, her, I wonder, th does, she needs the speed is the problem, um, but I, I wonder, does, does it affect with wind sweep? Because if it affects, it affects attack priority, not attack, like, negation, right? So basically all I'm doing is stopping them from doing a, I'm at this, uh, test it out and see what happens because uh, if that's if hardy bearing because if that's the case I think I might just like take this off and give her hardy bearing um, And then just have her sit there and, and hit everybody, but she's probably just gonna get outsped is the problem there So I don't know I'll have to think about that one Yeah, as you can see here no one here can really use hardy bearing because her you know dive bomb is here heavy blade is here uh, And dive bomb and heavy blade just kind of negates dive bomb. So it's like kind of dumb um so that's something to consider. We lost here. Uh, did we lose to Claude or did we lose to Alphonse? Oh, I forgot Trandra just has like a dance that can like, she, she can dance herself with. I need to, I need to boost my uh, healing tower too. Not that it would have made much of a difference there, but. So in this situation, this is one of the things that I've been finding to be really annoying. Now, again, would she have died, right? Because instead of Pala swapping here and then just hitting him, um, what's her name? Um, I just, I just said her name too. Um, Camilla moved out of position and decided to hit him herself. And it's probably because green has uh, elemental advantage over that. But uh, Minerva moving out of the way meant... Uh, not Minerva. Um, Camilla moving out of the way meant that Pala suddenly had no target to fly her formation onto and hit him. So the fact that like Camilla constantly moves out of position and then like people can stand like right here on this tile or like this tile or something and just bait her out is just like one of the most annoying things um, about having about having Camilla there. She just like moves out of the way and suddenly like half the fireball falls apart. Uh, that's why I put all these traps here because originally people would just like stand here and then she would just like move and then die and then everybody else fell apart after that. Um, so that's something to consider. Now, would we have... Did Pala... I'm not sure if the AI... Like, does the AI prioritize elemental advantage or color advantage over, like, death? Right? Because if, if Pala would teleport here and hit him and still die, then yeah, it would have played out that way, right? Uh, but now, I, I don't know. There's no way... That, well, I mean, you know, I'm not sure if there's any way of knowing. But, I mean, if I knew, if I knew the AI better, I would know that, okay, Pala would come here. If, if, if she didn't move, Pala would come here... Fight him and then die anyway, and then um, Camilla would have moved and died anyway, right? So if she was gonna die no matter what, uh, that's that, you know. So be it. But the thing is, I don't know. So you know, that's something to consider and something for you guys to consider out there is that um, this position here is very important, and sometimes it moves out of the way. Uh, whether it would have made a difference or not, who knows? But you know, it is what it is. Uh, so th this is another threat that we have to deal with a lot of the times. Is going to be um, the the New Year's Alphonse. This dude is a monster. Um, plus five to everything. Uh, special cooldown minus one, and then you can't double him. Uh, yeah, and then open the future. Not only, not only gives you fifty percent of his defense, so you just stack defense until you know, forever, and then he gets HP twenty five percent of whatever he gets back. Plus special spiral. It's just, he's just ridiculous. So if you got a plus, if you got him and you want to plus ten him. I say go for it, especially because then he just gives out everybody special spiral, like for free, like so. Yeah. He's a good unit uh, to say the least. So we can kind of see where we're going from here, and, and we're probably just gonna end up dead. Uh, let's actually play this out. Maybe maybe we'll see Pala attack at some point. Okay, so we're gonna see Pala attack. So 
I think the we're about to find. Oh, actually, yeah, she, she it doesn't really matter anymore because um, Pella needs to have other flyers around, or she doesn't, or her abilities don't work anymore. And there was only one other flower flyer, so yeah, there you go. Uh, so that one we kind of lost that one on the fact that on possibly AI or um, possibly just we would have lost that on on to Alphonse regardless, right? So that's another thing to consider there. Uh, we got a six victory here. Okay, so this is this is the first part where I started changing this. And that's because for those of you who saw the video, uh, I pulled a Saros from the banner, and I was like, well, let's throw her on the defense because she can't. Right again, like I said, it's not like your defense will do worse with one more unit on there, right? It's like you know, how am I going to do worse than that? Um, so here she is. So this is kind of interesting because you can see here she's the plus one unit, and I, I was mentioning her movement a lot, or uh, well, you know, I was mentioning her movement a decent amount earlier. Uh, because you can put her in there and then make her the seventh slot and she can't move now She's just gonna sit here. She can't be baited out or anything and that's that's that like that just the fact that, that happens Already made uh, Saros very useful and very valuable to this to this flyerball team or you know, whatever future um, Other mythic unit will be on here right for for that seventh slot um, hope you know, hopefully it'll be a flyer unit of some form or something like that, but you know for now the fact that she locks Camilla into place is just it's 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 awesome. Like Okay, so you can as you can see here, Saros didn't do very much, um, and that's just kind of to be expected. Um but now they're out of they're way out of position. So she can stand here, hit her, be ready to fight against her, and then, you know, we'll see what happens. So Yep, obviously she just like destroys her. Now that she's out of out of the way, she can stand here, kill her, and now they're in some serious trouble. So of course she's dead. Uh, she's gonna kill her, and then she didn't activate. Oh, she can't activate her thing because I think here is where I changed this. Yeah, five. So now it's seven, right? Now they can't use it at all. Um, so there you go. Uh, this thing here, it's kind of all right. I mean, now she's trapped here, so she's gonna get sniped next turn. Um, then we took out that so basically, you know, this team worked out a lot better than I, you know I guess usually plan and that that's kind of one of the other things that's funny about her You forget that she has just regular vantage in her weapon sometimes Because um, obviously she has vantage against all these units here. You can see That are she's effective against uh, But then she also just has regular vantage. So if her HP is under 75 she counterattacks before their counterattack so which is uh, hilarious because people forget that a lot. I mean, they'll just like attack into her and then not realize that and then die uh, <laughs> uh, So you can see this team is a little better, but we're gonna see um, we're gonna see it lose right now uh, Yeah, we're gonna see it lose pretty hard. So let's take a look at that Okay, so we lose to a Reinhardt in here somewhere I forgot how exactly we lose but it makes me kind of change this up because I think something happens yeah, that basically, this is where I, I realized we gotta move this out of here because it's not doing much here. Uh, put it like over here somewhere. Okay. Okay. So, basically, that's kind of a problem, right? So, she does not have vantage on magical units. So... She's basically useless against any mage, so I realized that. Okay, let's let's not have uh, young Sheeta there because she's too exposed, and like fifty percent of this game is like mages. Uh, so it's not or not not only mages, but like magical damage in general. So I was like, okay, let's like like dragons and such. Okay, let's not let's not carry that over. So that's why I kind of rethought that strategy. So we're going here, and now because somebody died, uh, basically everything kind of hits the fan, and we're all just kind of. Start moving like crazy, and again, as you can see, Camilla's out of position. Um, but that's because she died, and now she's an active unit. And this is a much better um, situation here. Uh, of course, uh, we still don't stand a chance against um, Lilina. She's very strong. And yeah, from here, basically, we we you know. We lose now. Funnily enough, um, if I had distant counter on her, which I, I really do want to put on Saros, 
Uh, he might have, she might have been able to kill him, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. It's something you'd have to, I'd have to check out later. But yeah, so from here we can kind of see everybody just died. Um, we got kind of taken apart by a well-designed team. It wasn't like a regular strategy. It was just kind of like we went in here, we did what we needed to, and then we're out. So as you can still, you can see here, we still lost, even though I had made some changes. Um, so I wanted this healing tower to heal basically everybody, but that's not really that beneficial. So I was just like, okay, well, I, I moved that later, and then we have this here. Makes it harder to come over here and try to snipe these towers because then everybody's like, nobody could walk unless, you know, you stand here and you have a range unit snipe this. Um, but then you're susceptible to like all this other damage. So that's something to consider. Uh, but we still lost here. So let's kind of look at what happened. Okay. And this is, this is, again, this is what I was talking about earlier. She doesn't have effectiveness against dagger units, right? And um, CC vantage units, like... So, so for one, she lost here to Lin because she doesn't have an effectiveness against dagger units. But in general, you, you, you have to realize, and you know, I came to, I was like, oh yeah, of course. A lot of the CC Vantage teams out there run a lot of dagger units. We got a Thame, we got like Matthew, everybody with a Broadleaf fan. I mean, I obviously I run, um, what's her name, um, Felicia and whatnot. Uh, so dagger, so she's 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 a little too, um, she's not as general as you need her to be. Uh, she's not as general as you need her to be, so we kind of have to, like, deal with, you know, that. So I, I moved her out of there later, and we'll see how that the map that changes the map. Of course, we can see here, Saros is... My Saros got a, um, uh, what's it called? A Bane in res, and I, I like... I feel like I'm, like, 97% sure that's a super Bane, too. Um, just because that, you know, I don't know, who knows. Um, but yeah, so she has a Bane in res, um, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, if I get like a, I kind of want just like one merge on her, but it's not really worth like investing in her is kind of like iffy, uh, unless, you know, she comes out on a banner somewhere where there's a lot of other blue units that I need. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be kind of hard to like decide that to invest into another one. But anyway, that's kind of complaining about, uh, RNG there. Uh, gotcha. Uh, but this encounter would probably do her well. Um, uh, but yeah, so let's kind of see what happens from here. Obviously, she gets danced, and no big deal from there. Uh, again, now that a unit's missing, everybody kind of moves out of position, and, you know, we end up in weird situations like this. Uh, of course, she kills her with effectiveness, and then she kills her. Uh, and from there, we basically have nothing else we can do. Uh, we got one unit, so that's pretty nice. Uh, but basically, everyone's going to die now. And that's that. And replay. So I think this last one might have the changes I made. And we'll see how we lost because, you know, okay. So these are the changes I made. And this might be what I end up leaving it on. Uh, because basically if, uh, let's see. If they stand here, they're going to get hit by this, right? If they try to snipe that or something like that, right? And then we have this here to, to just kind of, like, make fights on these tiles less appealing. Um, and then, uh, ultimately, we have all this stuff here just blocking off this tower to make sure they don't, like, use Linja. Even though, as you saw, even though we have this tower leveled up and nobody sniped it, like, everybody's been using Linja <laughs> on, like, every offense team. Um... And then someone here, this person's like very invested in in uh, in Linja, so they're actually running this building here. This is which is pretty good, right? Because yeah, so she can snipe a unit, dance herself, snipe another unit, use this, and then dance herself again to either snipe another unit that's already like half your team gone, or move out of the way. Um, so you know that's kind of that's very strong, obviously. Uh, but I actually haven't seen this one. This is the the this one happened today, only like an hour ago um, or two hours ago, maybe now. Uh, but I'm actually curious to see what would happen here. So presumably, uh, I guess she just snipes this and then proceeds to do uh, Linja things. Okay, so of course the that that's kind of hard to deal with. Okay. Okay. So we we died there to Linja, um, and basically uh, to my own uh, what's it called? To my own bolt trap, uh, which maybe I should swap it out and put it like over here somewhere or something like that. Or maybe just not have it there at all. Yeah, I might just like put that bolt trap somewhere else. Um, just because taking damage like that 
basically taking true damage, being like that or the bolt tower or whatever, is usually very hard because it's very bad because I have invested so much into like um like defense and res, right, with all these. And that just kind of bypasses all that and makes it makes her just an easy kill. So that's something to another thing to consider. Uh, but I might move this. I don't know. We'll see. Um, mainly these were here to kind of stop people from wanting to bait her out, right? But now she can't be baited out, right? She, she's just going to stand here because she's, she's locked up. Uh, this one specifically was here to stop Re uh, Regan from just running up to her, running up to her and hitting her. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I needed one here and then one here. But now that Saros is just standing here instead. Um, yeah, now she's just standing here instead. That definitely makes that a little easier. So um, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, and from here, again, there's not much we can do considering um... Wait a minute, what's going on? Oh, that's right, they, uh, so there you go, I mean, this is just kind of like textbook uh, uh, Lin play, right? So they sniped her, went up to snipe her, and now that both of the, the dual heroes are gone, she can move again. And, and even like all that, basically, you know, best laid, best laid plans uh, have been laid to rest there because um, like obviously, you know, you run not only one duo hero but two duo heroes to make sure that if they snipe one, they still don't have access to their um, their special thing or whatever. Uh, but even even then, uh, Linja managed to overcome all of it and just destroy everything anyway, right? So that's something uh, that's something to consider. Um, very interesting. Uh, and then obviously, uh, Plumeria is not strong enough to kill uh, Linja, and then Linja just gets to do what she does the best to kill everything. Um, of course, that's there. Now she hits her. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, that's a hardy burying Altina. That's very strange. I've never seen that before. Um, most people, right, I think most of us just run her on Vantage to, to, to capitalize on that, but this person here with the uh, <laughs> with the plays... Hmm. Like, I don't... I mean, uh, at this point, I don't question anything, anything this guy is running because <laughs> they obviously just outplayed me uh, pretty well without even really breaking the sweat. Uh, and then we can see here, basically, you know, Saros is just going to die. Yeah. Uh, but in general, I think that, that went pretty well. Um, I think... Let's go back here. I think I'm going to keep this set up and probably put this, like, let's see, what was this do? No, we don't want that there. We'll put that there, right? We'll put some more stuff here. Um... Yeah. Basically, if someone wants to stand here, well, that was kind of the other thing, was I didn't want, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Um, of course, she's going to take damage, but that's okay, because she's not that big a deal anyway. It's mainly just her. Um, I guess we could put it here and then get it out of the way. Put this, like, here somewhere. Uh, yeah, that seems, that seems all right. Uh, but anyway, so, so, so as you can see, this is kind of like where I'm landing on, um, these six, and this is kind of what I had thought of, like, I was like, okay, let's just leave this six and put her there, but then I decided to, like, put her there and put her there and kind of, like, move that around a little bit just to see, uh, because I also kind of like, you know, we talked about this last time in one of my other defense videos was, um, you really want a more aggressive positioning, which is why cav lines are so good, because they basically cover the entire map, um, yeah, they basically cover the entire map. So uh, having her forward a little bit like this was, you know, I, I figured might help a bit. But, you know, there's no aggressive positioning that's aggressive enough for this comp because uh, we're all flyers. We don't have enough movement to really um, to do very much with that. Um, yeah. Actually, one of the funny things was I wanted to try... Um, I, I probably should have pulled more on that banner, and I might... Uh, I think it's been over. Yeah, I think it's over now. Um, I probably should have put, pulled more a little bit on that banner. For one, maybe to get a merge on her. Uh, but for two, to maybe get uh, Odd Tempest here, because that'd be pretty cool, because I, I realized I had forgotten, because someone had mentioned um, on Odd Turns, she can use Odd Tempest triggers, and she has three movement. And then on Even Turns... No. No. Uh, get uh, even tempest whatever right so on odd turns she can use her duo skill and then on even turns the do even tempest uh, triggers and then she can you know move three spaces so basically she can move three spaces at all times right is, is the kind of the point to that uh unfortunately that's only really worthwhile on um 
on offense because you can't trigger this ability on defense as well as like she doesn't need three movement when she can like she already has three movement one two three standing here and then hitting someone here or one two three standing here hitting someone here right so that's not that big a deal uh, i just thought it was funny um that she could you know kind of abuse that to, to such a degree um but this thing i don't know this thing's kind of annoying me now that i don't know where to t what to do with it maybe just leave it here i'm out of range and it hurts them um i don't know we'll have to figure that out probably just leave it here though uh but yeah so i mean i kind of like the way that operated it just like i wonder if if this didn't pop right I wonder if we would have survived that because I think you know because for one Camilla should be should have guard active at the time uh, and then I don't get specialed and then um, I have so many defenses and, and you know I didn't lose a bunch of health uh, so yeah that's kind of interesting to, to have lost on something so sim something so uh, simple was <laughs> just poor placement of my uh, lightning trap uh, but all in all I think this is a pretty good um, setup right because like I said it covers a lot of weaknesses so it covers so it basically we fixed Reagan's problem which was um, I needed to put something basically I need to make it so Reagan doesn't just run up to her and hit her and then hit her and then leave um, so the only places Reagan can do that is is here now it's being taken up by Saros and here and now this trap is here um, so the only and the only way for that to happen is for for Reagan to like stand here uh, get stunned and then have them risk a unit to stand here and uh, yeah I should probably put this here have them rest right because if it's if this lightning bolt is way over here it's obvious that this isn't it right but granted it's still probably kind of obvious that it is let's see it's still kind of obvious that it's like oh it's probably this one but you know it could be like you know just a little bit of hesitation because if it's way off in the corner where it's not going to hit anybody it's like oh okay obviously he didn't want to hit anybody um i don't know but this is just just enough that it's like okay well i don't really want to mess with that um i don't know we'll, we'll see we'll, we'll move this around and we'll see where this goes uh, but the only thing is to, to risk to put her here and then risk that this is uh, not active and then put a dancer here to dance her then hit her and then use Reagan's like secondary Kanto thing and then run away um, or just like take this opportunity to like come over here reposition her and then swap and then kind of run away right uh, but then at that point they've already invested so many resources because into trying to just do the Reagan thing that I don't think anybody's going to even try to do that uh, as you can see, a lot of people, you know, as soon as I put these here, we didn't see anybody just run up to her with Reagan and then do whatever, right? Uh, which is the problem before. We, we saw that, I mean, I lost so many battles just because there was nothing protecting Camilla from Reagan. She just ran up to me, hit me, and, you know, the whole thing fell apart. Uh, so, fortunately, we're not losing to Reagan anymore, so that's nice. Um, Bector, obviously, we're going to lose to Bector until, you know, I have something that can counter Bector. Um, right now, Pala's doing her best, <laughs> but that's obviously not, you know, necessarily enough. Um... What else? Uh, obviously, we haven't seen any uh, legendary leaves in like forever. Uh, not only on this season, I don't know what season he's on usually, um, but I, on on no season like this season, last season, the season before that, I haven't seen um, a single leaf running around at all. Um, so that's kind of that's something to consider as well. Um, what else? She needs something here on the B slot, like in. I think in general, probably like a, uh, what's it called? Like a joint drive defense or something like that would be best here, but I don't have that, and that's kind of premium fodder, so I don't know if I just want to give it to a Saros who's just here taking up space while I'm waiting for the next uh, defense mythic to give us seven slots, but there's that. Um, what else? And basically the last kind of thing that you saw there, uh, and it's something that now you have to consider a lot because basically everyone has her now, uh, is having to deal with Linja, and as you can see, I don't really have much of a counter to her, um, other than just having like having to tank her, right? So, um, I might consider putting what's that? What's that one? Um, guard bearing on Camilla now that uh, it's available in the divine or the in the paper shop, the normal paper shop, not the limited one. So now we have one of those. I might give her guard bearing uh, and then, you know, basically uh, make it harder for people to just snipe her. But I think at this point, they would probably just, like, Linjo would just stand here, hit her, probably survive, uh, probably kill her, honestly. And then, you know, like, stand here, snipe her, and then, you know, like, duo's building and then get out of there and then, you know, get out of the way and, and whatnot. But, you know, we'll see how that goes. 
Um, for those of you who are who want a more solid definitive answer to Linja, I really do think that just building a Bector, getting AR save, and then like even if you want to run the fireball, a fly a fireball, a flyer ball, probably like don't don't run Sheeta and then run Bector right here. Um defense team. Right? Put Bector oh, I have that in the wrong order there. Let's go find him. Put basically just put Bector where uh, Young Sheeta is, and he'll basically defend everybody. Uh, and you know, for those of you who know, Bector is basically unkillable um, on defense. So he just sits here, and then uh, AR saves everyone. Uh, so if they try to snipe, basically they try to snipe her, they're gonna fight him. And then next turn, if they're in they're in range of her, she has very good offensive um, capabilities because she basically gives a free give herself a free follow up attack, uh, plus six attack, and then plus the mirror impact skill uh, is very good. Um, but yeah, so basically, n like, as long as he's here, none of these units around him can die. Like, at all. Uh, the only one who probably can die is going to be uh, Pala, but she's kind of out of the way, so hopefully it's harder to snipe her. Um... How's that? Does it look better? That might be better. Make it harder to snipe. Basically make it impossible. Harder... Harder, if not impossible, to snipe this because basically last time what happened was Regan uh, ran in here, hit this, and then ran forward here and hit that. Uh, but if this is here, you, the only way to get to this is going here and then here. Um, and that's not really an option. Um, I need this here because otherwise, if that's not there, the problem is that uh, Lin's range goes up to here. So if they just put like a blue uh, blue mage here, and Lin's just gonna try to fight them, and she's just gonna die. Uh, which is the only reason I haven't done that, right? So I don't know. I have to think about that one. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll leave it like that and then put that there. We'll see how that goes uh, next season. Uh, but like I said, uh, having Bector here with uh, AR save is probably just like one of the best ways to make sure you can't like die on the. Um, they can't just player phase you, right? Uh, not only does he basically and it also means that you can run something more aggressive here, right? So you can run um, You can like put her there and then not run Camilla run something other than Camilla Maybe something you know if you're if you're having some like if you build this right like if I were to build this and Now suddenly I find out there's a new counter like I don't have a counter for like um, I don't know, like I said, I already covered Leaf, Bector. Let's say, yeah, let's say I want to run a Bector counter. I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm still at the point where I don't really know what I would run to counter Bector 100% of the time. Because um, not only do they kind of range from, like, really good to plus 10, just max investment, and I still don't know. I mean, I, I don't know the answer, right? I don't know what you would use to plus 10, to kill a plus 10 Bector. Maybe it's some sort of, like, blue or, or green. Probably something like a, uh, what's her name? Maybe like a fire sweep Nino or something like that. Um, like a, you really want a green, a strong green mage um, that can kind of just like kill him before he has anything. So obviously Thrasir is a pretty good example. Um, so basically you can kind of run your Thrasir here, right? And uh, now, you know, if they ever try to kill Thrasir, you know, he's got it covered, right? But oh no, actually, well, yeah, he's only got, he's only, he's only going to cover uh, far... Uh, skill so if someone tries to like you know stand here and hit her she's gonna die but the theory is that they're not gonna just stand there and hit her right uh, but anyway uh it, it allows you to make a change this up too right so it's not if you're limited by the fact that you have camilla here which i kind of am um you can swap her out for something you know maybe a little bit because so you have to have something here very strong and, and not you know very sturdy which the series isn't really very um but if you have him backing them up, then basically no one here can die, and they all you get the benefits of all of them. So you get like Thrasir's one shot capability, one turn capability. You get like everybody else's like you know abilities and all that. So that's something to consider. Is that uh, having Hector here doing that is is one of your better options for defense. Like basically he's unkillable. Um, they can't initiate on you. They have to like end turn here somewhere, and that even that's like not very good either, right? So. Uh, and then on top of that, Bector's weakest state is always his uh, player phase. So whenever he tries to initiate on people, uh, and because you have so much mobility with flyers and whatnot, they'll kind of outpace him, and he'll always be lagging behind them, right? 
um, which is what you want because you want him to stand there and take the hits for them by standing behind them, uh, and but you don't want him to initiate because he's just going to die. So there you go. That, that's kind of something to consider. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, there's not a whole lot else to say. Just you know, get yourself a uh, a vector. <laughs> uh, as you can see here, mine's only plus two. Um, I'm really considering thinking about like investing into him. Maybe you know, if a banner comes around, maybe pulling on it that you get the four percent banners on blues or something like that, and then uh, he tends to show up. I just I, I never really want to spend orbs on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, hopefully you guys uh, gleaned something from this. Uh, let's put Shida back because actually I just like Shida better, and obviously I don't have a uh, AR far save anyway, so it's not like he's doing anything there. Um, but yeah, I mean like. This team is just slowly getting better, and basically, I wanted to kind of show off the the. Um, I wanted to talk about mainly the fact that Saros, what Saros brought to this team, that was like infinitely better than what I had known when I had really kind of had in mind, was just the fact that like Saros can lock down Camilla, so she doesn't get baited out or like anything stupid happens, uh, and everybody else around her, which is more important because she's just here to give. She's just here to not die. Give an anchoring for everybody's flyer formations and provide uh, plus three attack speed and to everyone around her, right? So that's kind of what, you know, the point was there. Um, yeah, I mean, if I give her probably uh, guard bearing here, I might give her like um, uh, goad flyers here to boost everyone else's uh, offensive capabilities a little bit more. But I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, just because if I have guard bearing, the reduction in four attack and speed it might not be necessary, but uh, it is what it is. And then obviously, for those of you who <laughs> have been on this channel long enough, you know I'm still waiting for that um, uh, that Camilla. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Not, it's not specialty change here. It's a resplendent alt. Because uh, then basically you're running uh, what 40 speed, 54 uh, attack, 39, 39. And that's pretty good. I mean, you're not suddenly, you know, broken now, but, you know, two stats to everything on your main tanker uh, is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that's basically all for today. I just wanted to go over um, some interesting things that I kind of started thinking about with this defense and and, um, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, again, if anything interesting comes up, I'll, I'll be sure to uh, go over it in a video. Um, Maybe uh, make a follow-up on this next season. I uh, have to wait for the, that season to roll back around again. Uh, as we can see here, yep, it's not here anymore. So the Hero Rises banner is gone. Um, not that I necessarily wanted to pull for it, but I was certainly just kind of thinking, well, you know, maybe the, the, the uh, what's it called? Oh, actually, I can't pull on that because he, he has Odd Tempest and not Even Tempest, which I think the new, the new what's-her-name has. Um, Dagger has even Tempest, so that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, not that I was going to necessarily pull on it, but just fixing up that res, uh, Bane on, on Saros is like, it's very tempting, right? I, I really want to get rid of this res Bane, uh, because she's losing a lot of, um, what's it called, uh, percent damage reduction from percentage of this. Uh, because again, if this was like 41... And then after that, she gets 6 plus 5 is 11. That boosts her up to, what, 41, 52 res. Um, and basically, to get the most out of this, you have to have uh, 10 stats higher. So basically, she can she can get she gets full reduct damage reduction on anyone, uh, 41 res and under. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that was the point of that. And there's not a whole lot of units that are going to have 40 res and under. So she'll generally always have... A high damage reduction on top of the fact that like she'll have she'll have high defenses right just like high stats and then on top of that have the high uh, what's it called have the very high um, damage reduction so um, yeah <laughs> this uh, this this minus res feels bad but um, it is what it is it's not it's not that big a deal I, I don't think I'd even if I even if it was there today I don't know if I'd summon um, but yeah so. Hopefully anybody could gleam anything from this and hopefully it was somewhat entertaining. Um, interesting to see how this fireball works out. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's about all I got today. Good luck on your uh, uh, Aether Raids pushes out there, all of you. <laughs>